In this video, I'll show you how I paint some worn robes. Hello BitsBrew, that's Craig from BitsBox.co.uk here with another painting tutorial. So in this one I'm going to show you how I do sort of rugged, war-torn looked cloaks or robes for my Space Marine Eliminators. And of course you can apply this to any type of cloak, robe, um, or just cloth in general. If you want to go for this sort of war-torn, sort of worn look. Um, <laughs> I'll explain that a bit more as the video goes on. Um, but yeah, it's sort of just dirty and worn. Um, and you can use different colour schemes to the one I'm showing you and just switch out some of the colours. Um, but I'll get into that in a minute. Before we do, if you're new to the channel and you like all things miniature wargaming related, um, such as paint tutorials, battle reports and the like, then do feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. And before we begin, as always, just a massive shout out to all of our Patreons. You guys are awesome and you help support the channel and if you want to be like these people, then there is a link down below that tells you all about our Patreon. So, Let's get straight into this. Okay, so here we have the Eliminator miniature. Now I spray mine in um, Chaotic Red from Army Painter. So I've took some Doomball Brown just to go over the cloak area. Um, but you don't have to use that colour if you so wish, but I like sort of a reddy brown nature of it. Um, so then I take some Dawnstone and I really thin it out and then I'm just applying it sort of in patches. So this is just way different to how you would normally paint anything really um it's just a messy random just as you can see i'm just really just slopping it on anywhere letting it pool up in some areas spreading it out in others just trying to build up a variation of color essentially and um, this will look really weird at this stage but but um just stay with me um <laughs> yeah um it will, will dry a lot lighter than this as well so don't worry too much but um, we're just sort of just doing all these sort of undertones now so and um, the next step will make a little bit more sense so once that's dry you can see it's a lot more paler but you can see the variation um, of the colour there then I'm going to take some uh, Militarum Green this is a contrast paint and just essentially going to go all over this now what it will do is it will tint the Dawnstone to the sort of greeny colour it will change for reddy brown for doomball brown slightly but not so much so essentially what we're going to be left with is almost like a sort of camo pattern of um sort of browny reds and green and there'll be variations of the green as well due to the variations of the dawnstone so that's essentially what we're going for and this was to give us a little bit of variety in our sort of undertones and hopefully it'll give us a nice good effect once we go on to the next stages. So you can see the difference here. I'm just pointing out with the brush, the darker green, the lighter green, and the reds there. And when it's dry, it looks something like this. So a lot more subtle when it's dry, but you can see all the different colours there. And that's exactly what I'm going for. So next I'm going to take some Balor Brown. Now you don't necessarily have to take Balor Brown here. Um, my original one, I used Mournfang Brown, and I think I actually like that look better but I thought I'd try the Balor Brown on this one and it'll give us a bit more contrast in the final look and I'm just taking a bit of sponge you can just get a bit of old pack and sponge or just eh, just egg, any regular bit of sponge and just dab this on all over now I wiped a little bit off the sponge just so we didn't have too thick um, coats of this so but I've left enough on there just to give us this sort of coverage and once I've gone all over that, you can see it dries a bit lighter, and that just gives us even more colour for our undertone. So now to take run its hide. So this is going to be my main colour. So if you're going for a different colour robe, maybe you're going for black or dark blue or whatever, really, um, that's the colour you would use now. But for me, I'm going for dark brown. So I'm taking run its hide, and again with a sponge going over, but this time going over a bit more heavily. I'm actually going to make two passes here. I'll just show you the one on the camera. I thinned out the paint just a little bit as well. So as you can see, that's building up that main colour and just leaving lots of bits in between the brown of different colours. So we've got some of the Balor brown showing through, we've got some of that 
Militarum Green and even a bit of the original Doom Ball Brown as well. And you can see that it gives us just a massive variation in colour there. So it sort of shows um, just sort of how worn this is. And of course if you don't want it to be too worn you can apply even more Rhinox Hide. Next I'm just taking some Null Oil Shade Wash and just applying it to all the recesses. Not being massively neat here. You could take an Agrax wash and go all over this to bring your colours together as well if you feel it's not um, subtle enough. But I quite like this look so I've just left it like so and I just went for a little bit of excess there. Now I thinned out the oil just a little bit as well because I don't want to speak too much of a heavy wash in them creases. But you don't particularly have to be too neat with this step if you don't wish. Because after all this is very worn. So you can get away with being a little bit messy. And once that's dry you can see this is the effect that we've got. And I'll show you some better pictures at the end of the video as well. But I'm really happy with this. You'll notice just under the backpack there's a little light area there where I couldn't get to, right there. Um, the sponge doesn't always get to all them hard to reach areas so what you can do is take some of that Rhinox hide again and then just grab an old brush. So then you just load a little bit on your brush and just get in there, just sort of dab it in randomly. Again if you don't have a sponge you could get an old brush and use it like a dry brush and just sort of stipple it in random areas. You won't get exactly the same effect but it would be quite similar. But yeah for these little areas you sort of just have to get a little brush in there. Like so. And that is essentially it. Um, it's as easy as that really. And here's the other one that I mentioned before. You can see it's got that Mournfang brown rather than the Battle brown which I think I do prefer personally. Um, but both effects work quite well. I thought the Battle Brown would just show up better on, on camera and I think I was right about that at least. I've also just dry brushed some dust at the bottom. Just using some Zandri dust. And of course you can do that however you want to match your base. And the miniature on the right is also um, finished. Whereas uh, obviously the one we've been working on is only halfway done. So here's just a couple of little close up shots. And yeah I'm really happy with this effect. Um, quite happy that it came out. Um, I sort of had it in my head, just a theory behind it, and I just put it to the test in this video and I'm quite happy with how it came out. And here's the more subtle one there. So if you enjoyed this video then please do feel free to give it a thumbs up and if you have any ideas for any future painting tutorials that you would like to see then please do let me know in the comments down below. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you all again in the next video. If you enjoyed this video then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.